But Jesus says to him, Start following with me as my disciple and continue to do so as a habit of life and allow the dead to bury their own dead. And after he had gone on board the boat, his disciples accompanied him. And behold, a great storm arose in the sea, an earthquake of the sea. Its water stirred to their depths so that the boat was so covered with the waves that it was hidden. But he himself was sleeping And having come to him, they aroused him from his sleep, saying, Lord, save us at once, we are perishing. And he says to them, Why are you such timid ones, men of little faith? Then, having arisen, he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there came a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of exotic man is this? that even the winds and the sea are obedient to him. And when he had come to the other side into the country of the Gardenes, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce and savage, so that a person is not strong enough and thus able to pass by along the road. And behold, they called aloud, saying, What bond of fellowship is there between us and you, O Son of God? Did you come to this place to torment us before the appointed time? Now, there was at a distance from them a herd of many hogs feeding, and the demons went to begging him, saying, Since you are ejecting us, send us off into the herd of hogs. And he said to them, Be gone, and keep on going. And they, having come out, went off into the hogs. And behold, the entire herd started forward impetuously down down the precipice into the sea, and they died in the waters. And those grazing them fled, and having gone into the city, they reported all things and the things concerning those possessed with demons. And behold, the entire city went out to meet Jesus, And having seen him, they begged him to get out of their boundaries. And having gone on board the boat, he crossed over and entered his own city. And behold, they were bringing to him a paralytic, lying prostrate on a couch. And having seen their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Courage, child, and continue to be courageous. Your sins are being forgiven. And behold, Certain of those men learned in the sacred scriptures said to themselves, excuse me, said in themselves, This fellow was guilty of impious and reproachful speech injurious to the divine majesty of deity. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why are you thinking pernicious things in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are being forgiven, or to say, Be arising and start walking and keep on walking. But in order that you may know that the Son of Man possesses authority on the earth to be forgiving sins, then he says to the paralytic, Be arising. Pick up and carry away your couch, and be going off into your home. And having arisen, he went off to his home, and the crowds, having seen, became afraid and glorified God, who gave authority such as this to men. And passing along from there, Jesus saw a man seated at his desk in the customs office, a collector of export and import duties, called Matthew. And he says to him, Start following with me as my disciple, and consider it a permanent appointment. And having arisen, he followed with him as his disciple. And it came to pass... And it came to pass that he was reclining at the dinner table in the house. And behold, many tax collectors and other sinners stained with certain vices or crimes, having come, were feasting together with Jesus and his disciples. And having seen this, the Pharisees were saying to his disciples, For what reason with the tax collectors and men stained with such vices and crimes is your teacher eating? And having heard this, he said, No need do those... Excuse me. No need do those have. (laughs) 
you're gonna have to excuse me because from time to time being that it's direct from greek and like it says in the preface they use a a lot of words to try to get the meanings across so sometimes i'm gonna trip up and i'm gonna need to go back so be patient with me so jesus said no need do those have who are in sound health of a doctor but those who are ill having gone on your way learn what is meant mercy i am desiring and not a sacrifice offered on an altar for i did not come to call men righteous in character but those who are sinners by nature then there come to him the disciples of john saying as for us what is the reason why we and the pharisees are observing fasts but your disciples are not doing so and jesus said to them the sons of the nuptials companions of the bridegroom are not able to be mourning while the bridegroom is with them are they but days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and they shall fast moreover no one puts a patch made of cloth which has not been pre-treated upon a worn-out garment for the patch which fills it tears away from the garment and the rent becomes worse neither do they put just made wine into worn out wine skins otherwise the wine skins burst and the wine is poured out and the wine skins are ruined but they put just made wine into wine skins new in quality and both are preserved from perishing while he was saying these things to them behold there came one a ruler and fell upon his knees and touched the ground with his forehead in an expression of profound reverence before him saying my daughter just now died but having come lay your hand upon her and she shall live and having arisen jesus followed with him also his disciples and behold a woman suffering with the flow of blood twelve years having come behind him touched the fringe of his outer garment for she was saying within herself if I only touch his garment, I shall be made whole. And Jesus, having turned around and having seen her, said, Cheer Cheerful courage, daughter, be having it constantly. Your faith has saved you and the cure is permanent. No relapse into your former condition. And the woman was restored to health from that hour. And Jesus Having come into the house of the ruler, and having seen the flute players and the crowd wailing tumultuously, kept on saying, Be clearing out of here so as to make room, for the little girl did not die, but is sleeping. And they looked down their nose at him and went to laughing. But when the crowd, but when the crowd was put out, having entered, he grasped her hand firmly, and the little girl was raised up. And this report went out throughout the land. And as Jesus was passing by from there, two blind men followed with him, shouting out, saying, Sympathize with our misery and help us, son of David. And after he had gone into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus says to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They say to him, Yes, master. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it become to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly charged them with earnest admonition, saying, Be seeing to it, let no one be knowing this. But they, having gone out, blazed abroad his fame throughout the whole of the land. And as they were going out, behold, they brought to him one who was dumb, being possessed by a demon. And the demon, having been ejected, the dumb man broke his silence and spoke. And the crowds marveled, saying, Never yet was it thus seen in Israel. But the Pharisees were saying, By the ruler of the demons he is ejecting the demons. And Jesus was going about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and making a public proclamation of the good news concerning the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness. And having seen the crowds, he was moved with compassion concerning them because they were exhausted by their troubles and their long 
aimless wanderings and had thrown themselves to the ground in an utterly prostrate condition as sheep not having a shepherd. Then he says to his disciples, The harvest indeed is great, but the workers few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to thrust out workers into his harvest. And having called to himself his twelve disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to be ejecting them and to be healing every disease and every sickness. Now, these are the names of the twelve who were sent off as, an ambas as ambassadors with credentials to fulfill a certain mission. First, Simon, the one called Peter, Andrew, his brother, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas, the Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent off on a mission, having given them a charge, saying, Into the road of the Gentiles do not go forth, and into a city of the Samaritans do not go, but be going on your way rather to the sheep of the house of Israel, sheep who have been neglected and have lost their way and are now wandering about without guidance. Moreover, as you go, make a public proclamation with such formality, gravity, and authority as must be listened to and obeyed, saying, The kingdom of heaven has come near and is imminent. Be healing those who are sick. Be raising the dead. Lepers, be cleansing. Demons be ejecting. In a gratuitous manner, you received. In a gratuitous manner, give. Do not begin to acquire for yourselves gold, nor even silver, nor even brass for your money belt, nor even a beggar's collecting bag for the road, nor even two undergarments, nor even sandals, nor even a walking stick, for the workman is worthy of his sustenance. And in whatever city or village you enter, Inquire carefully who in it is suitable, and there stay as a guest until whatever time you may depart. And while entering the house, pay it your due respects. And if the house is suitable, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not suitable, let your peace turn back to you. And whoever does not receive you or heed your words, while going forth out of that house or city, shake out the dust of your feet, considering them as heathen whose dust would defile you. Assuredly, I am saying to you, it will be more endurable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, it is I who am sending you on a mission as sheep in the midst of wolves. Consequently, become those who are wary as snakes and guileless as doves. Moreover, be constantly on your guard against the aforementioned men, for they shall deliver you over into the power of judicial tribunals, and in their synagogue courts of justice they shall scourge you. And before governors and even before kings you shall be brought on account of me resulting in a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. However, whenever they deli deliver you up, do not begin to be concerned about the manner in which or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that hour what you shall say. For, as for you, you are not the ones who are speaking, but the Spirit of your Father who is speaking in you. Moreover, a brother shall deliver a brother up to death, and a father a child. And children shall rise up against parents for their own advantage and put them to death. And you shall be hated by all on account of my name. But he who has preserved to the end, this one shall be kept safe and sound and rescued from danger and destruction. Moreover, Whenever they are persecuting you in this city, be fleeing to one of a different character, for, assuredly, I am saying to you, 
you positively will not finish the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. A pupil is not above the teacher, nor even a slave, slave above his master. It is sufficient for the pupil to be exactly like his teacher, and the slave exactly like his master. Since they surname the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those under the control of the master of the house? Do not begin to fear them, for there is not even one thing that has been covered up which shall not be uncovered, and secret which shall not be made known. That which I am speaking to you in the privacy of darkness, speak in the light of a public disclosure, and that which you are hearing in the ear, publicly proclaim on the housetops, and stop fearing those who kill the body but do not have the power to kill the soul, but rather be fearing him who has power to bring both soul and body to the condition of utter ruin and everlasting misery in hell. Are not two little sparrows sold for a penny? Yet one of them shall not fall upon the ground without the will or the in in intervention of your father. Moreover, also your hairs, the ones of your head, all of them have been counted and the result tabulated. Therefore, stop fearing. As for you, you are of more importance than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who is of such a character that he will confess me before men in the realization of and in testimony to his oneness with me, I also will confess him before my Father who is in heaven in the realization of and testimony to my oneness with him. But whoever is of such a nature that he will deny me before men, I also will deny him before my Father who is in heaven. Do not suppose that I came with the result that my coming would throw peace suddenly upon the earth. I did not come with the result that my coming would throw peace, but a sword. For I came with the result that my coming puts a man at variance with his father and a daughter against her mother, and the newly married wife against her mother-in-law, and the enemies of a man shall be those of his household. He who has an affection for the father or mother above that which he has for me is not worthy of me. And he who has an affection for son or daughter above that which he has for me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take, take his cross and take the same road with me, which I take, is not worthy of me. He who has found his soul life shall ruin and render it useless, and he who has passed a sentence of death upon his soul life for my sake shall find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me on a mission. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever shall give one of these lesser ones in their station in life a drink of cool water in the name of a pupil, assuredly, I am saying to you, he shall positively not lose his reward. And it came to pass that when Jesus finished giving detailed orders to the twelve disciples, he went away from that place for the purpose of teaching and of making a public proclamation in, the, in their cities with that formality, gravity, and authority which must be listened to and obeyed. Now John, having heard in the prison the works of the Christ, having sent through the intermediate agency of his pupils, said to him, As for you, are you he, the one who is coming? Excuse me. As for you, are you he, the one who is the coming one? Or should we be looking for another Messiah of a different character? And Jesus answered, Jesus answering said to them, Having gone on your way, take word back to John concerning the things you are hearing and seeing. Blind people are recovering their sight, and lame people are walking about. Lepers are being cleansed, and deaf people are hearing and dead people are being raised up, 
and poor people are being given good news. And spiritually prosperous is he, whoever does not find in me that of which he disproves, and that which hinders him from acknowledging my authority. And while these were going on their way, Jesus began to be saying to the crowds concerning John, What did you go out into the inhabited place to be contemplating as a spectacle? A reed being agitated by wind? Well, then... What did you go out to see? A man clothed in the soft garments of luxury and effeminate. <laughs> effeminacy. Effeminacy. <laughs> I've never even seen that word before. Behold, those accustomed to wearing the garments of luxury are in the homes of the kings. Well then, why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I am saying to you, and more than a prophet. This is he concerning whom it has been written, and the record is it extant today. Behold, as for myself, I send my messenger ahead of you who will make ready your road before you. Assuredly, I am saying to you, there has not arisen among those born of women a greater one than John the baptizer. However, the person of most humble station in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Indeed, from the days of John the baptizer until this moment, the kingdom of heaven is being taken by storm, and the strong and forceful one claims it for themselves eagerly, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And assuming that you would be disposed to receive the following favorably, he himself is Elijah, he who is about to come, he who has ears, let him be hearing. But to what shall I liken this breed of men? It is similar to children who are seated in the marketplaces, who are calling to a group of a different character, saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned, and you did not beat your breast for, for grief. For there came John not eating or drinking, and they are saying, He has a demon. There came the Son of Man, eating and drinking, and they are saying, Behold, a man who is a glutton and given to wine, one who associates familiarly with tax collectors and sinners stained with vice and crime. And yet, this aforementioned wisdom was shown to be such as it should be, righteous. This demonstrative this demonstration having its source in its works. Then he began to be reproaching the cities in which the most of his miracles, demonstrations of the power of God, were done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! Because if in Tyre and Sidon there had been done the miracles of God's power which were done in you, they would in that case long ago have repented in sackcloth and ashes. Nevertheless, I am saying to you, for Tyre and Sidon, it shall be more endurable in the day of judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, you will not be exalted as far as heaven, will you? You will be caused to descend even to the depths of misery and disgrace in the unseen world, because if in Sodom, there had been done the miracles demonstrating divine power which were done in you, it would in that case have remained until this day. Nevertheless, I am saying to you, for the land of Sodom it will be more endurable in the day of judgment than for you. At that epochal, strategic moment of time, Jesus answering said, I render praise to you, Father, Lord of the heaven and the earth, in joyful acknowledgement and concurrence of the fact that you hid these things from the wise and understanding ones and revealed them to those who are untaught. Even so, Father, because thus it was your good pleasure. All things to me were delivered by my Father, and no one has a full and experiential knowledge of the Son except the Father. 
Neither does anyone have a full and experiential knowledge of the Father except the Son, and he, whoever he may be, to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Come here to me, all who are growing weary to the point of exhaustion, and who have been loaded with burdens and are bending beneath their weight. And I alone will cause you to cease from your labor and take away your burdens and thus refresh you with rest. Take at once my yoke upon you and learn from me, because I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find cessation from labor and refreshment for your souls. For my yoke is mild and pleasant, and my load is light in weight. At that apocal and strategic time, Jesus proceeded on the Sabbath through the grain fields. And his disciples were hungry and began to be picking off the grain and to be eating it. Now, the Pharisees, having seen this, said to him, Behold, your disciples are doing that which is not lawful to be habitually done on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those with him? How he went into the house of God, and the loaves of bread which were set forth they ate, which it was not lawful for him to eat, neither for those with him, except for the priests alone? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple desecrate the Sabbath and are guiltless? However, I am saying to you, something greater than the temple is in this place. Moreover, if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not altar sacrifice, you would not in that case have pronounced guilty those who are guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And having gone away from that place, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man there having a hand shrunken and wasted. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to heal? In order that they might bring an accusation against him in court. But he said to them, What man shall there be of you who shall have one sheep? And if this would fall on the Sabbath into a pit, would not get a grip on it and lift it out? Therefore, how much better is a man than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful on the Sabbath to be doing good. Then he says to the man, Extend your hand at once. And he extended it, and it was restored to its former state of soundness as the other one. But the Pharisees, having gone out, consulted together against him, how they might destroy him. Now, when Jesus came to know it, he withdrew from there, and many people followed with him, and he healed them all. And he charged them sharply that they should not make him known, in order that there might be fulfilled that which was spoken through the intermediate agency of Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I chose, my beloved in whom my soul takes pleasure. I will place my spirit upon him, and in equitable administration of justice he will announce to the Gentiles. He will not wrangle nor even shout, neither will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A reed that has been completely crushed he will not break, and a dimly burning lamp wick he shall not quench until until he will have caused the equitable administration of justice to move straight on to its intended goal, resulting in victory. And in his name will the Gentiles hopefully trust. Then there was brought to him one possessed with a demon, blind and dumb, and he healed him, so that the one who was dumb spoke and saw. And all the common people were beside themselves with astonishment, and kept on saying, This man, is he perchance the son of David? But the Pharisees, having heard, said, This fellow is not ejecting the demons except by means of Beelzebul, ruler of the demons. And knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom split up into factions at variance with itself is reduced to naught, and every city or house split up into factions at variance with itself shall not stand. And, assuming that Satan is ejecting Satan, 
he was a variance with himself. How how is it excuse me? How is it possible then for his kingdom to stand? And assuming for the moment that I, by means of Beelzebul, am ejecting the demons, your sons, by means of whom are they ejecting them? <laughs> For this reason, they themselves shall be your judges. But since by means of God's spirit, I'm ejecting the demons, surely then the kingdom of God has come upon you unexpectedly. Or how is a person able to to enter the house of the strong man and carry off by force his household furnishings unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? He who is not with me is against me. And he who is not gathering with me is scattering. On this account, I am saying to you, every sin and malicious slander shall be forgiven men. But the aforementioned impious and reproachful speech injurious to the divine majesty of the spirit shall not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the son of man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this age nor in the one about to come. Either declare the tree good and its fruit good, or declare the tree rotten and its fruit rotten, for by its fruit is the tree known. O progeny of vipers, who are such by nature? How is it possible that you are able to be speaking good things, being by nature pernicious individuals? For out of that which fills the heart, the mouth is accustomed to speak. The good man out of his good treasure house brings out good things. And the pernicious man out of his pernicious treasure house brings out pernicious things. Moreover, I am saying to you, Every word which men shall speak, which has no legitimate work, which is imperative and thus morally useless and unprofitable, they shall give account of at the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Then certain one of those learned in the sacred scriptures then certain certain of those learned in the sacred scriptures and certain of the pharisees answered him saying teacher we are desiring to see an attesting miracle from you but he answering said to them a pernicious and adulterous breed is always hankering after an attesting miracle And an attesting miracle shall not be given it except the attesting miracle of Jonah, the prophet. For just as Jonah was in the gullet of the sea monster three days and three nights, thus shall the son of man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Men, Ninevites, shall arise in the judgment with this breed of men and shall condemn it because they repent as a result of the proclamation of Jonah. And behold, Something more than Jonah is here 